Presented by Caltech. Extreme environments are the ultimate frontier. So in our group here at Caltech, we're fascinated by granular materials and their behavior under extreme environments. Granular materials are a part of all of our lives in a variety of different ways. We walk on them, our buildings are built on them. And they're incredibly important because they range from our coffee beans, so our foods, to our medications, our pills. But we're also very familiar with granular materials in the type of soils like sand. And everything we have done so far on Mars and everything that we will do on Mars has to do with granular materials and we usually don't think about that. We know something here on Earth about how sands perform, but if we're going to be digging into, say, Martian sands or crawling, walking, or driving on the surface, that strength, that capacity for that soil to bear load may be totally different to the one that we see here on Earth. So we wanted to perform these experiments on board of a zero-g plane where we could measure the strength properties of sands under very low gravity. Think of a fish tank with a bunch of sand in it. We're gonna take a big push block, we're gonna push it in, and the sand's gonna deform on a plane. And the angle that that plane makes is a characterization of the strength. We're gonna do this at a variety of different gravity levels because you wanna see if this strength parameter depends on gravity. And this will give us some understanding of whether experiments on Earth will be applicable on Mars or on an asteroid or on any other celestial body. Our instrument was massive. It was about this big. And it had to be carried by two people, putting it on a plane that would do the parabolas to achieve zero or very low gravity was a very challenging situation, even for the experimental device itself. You go up for a minute or so, and you come down, and then after that, you have about 15 to 20 seconds where you can actually do your experiment. So everything has to happen within 15 seconds, or you lose it, and we only get 25 of them. Jason was the one that designed the experimental protocol and actually the one responsible for executing that protocol on board. All of us could get sick except for Jason. There was a team of four of us on the flight. There was myself, there was Jose, there was Dan, who's a former postdoc that worked at the very beginning stages, and then our JPL collaborator, Brian Trees. It took about three years and probably around 20 people to make this happen. We show up for the, uh, the zero-g flight and we go through a series of checks. We're on a golf cart, we're driving through the plane, we're looking around, and then all of a sudden, bam, there it is, and it's like, whoa. You know, it's not this little, you know, tiny guy, it's a, it's a big plane. <laughs> Going over the first parabola was a really interesting experience. Everything's pulling you down. It's hard to kind of control yourself, and so they typically have you lying down on the floor, because if you're standing, it's kind of difficult. And then as you're going down, Basically, you're just doing free fall. Dan was jumping up and down at about parabola, exactly at parabola one, actually. So he got sick. As soon as we're going up, I hear click, and the fluidization for the experiment goes on. I'm just like, yes. And then it's just boom, and your stomach just drops. It's going, it's going, it's going. Don't touch it, don't touch and it. I'm starting to get data, and the don't camera's rolling. It. And it's just this huge sense of relief. It's going, it's going higher and higher. It turned out that because of a zero gravity effect, the granular material floated as if it was underwater. And our piston that was supposed to interact with the sample interacted in a completely different way, almost as if the experiment was upside down. Nice, man, I like that. And then about the eighth or ninth parabola, uh -oh. Nothing happened. We're stuck. the push block just got stuck. It stopped halfway through the experiment, and we're like, oh, that's not good. We were terrified. Fortunately, we had a break between parabolas, and we were able to open it up, reset it, and it worked again. Here we go! Zero! So I think one of the big takeaways for me is that science is very challenging, but doing the hard problems is worthwhile, and it can be a lot of fun in the process. Oh.
we got these amazing images and these amazing test results. And of course, the mechanical behavior and the strength properties of the, of the sample were completely different from what we were expecting here on Earth. We cannot rely on our perception of reality as we see it here and extrapolate to a completely different environment. You really need to understand the new environment that you're dealing with. That was fun. <laughs> How's it up there in the sky?